Hi, I'm Claire Milliken. Welcome to episode 174 of Art This Week. In this week's episode, we visit the Dallas Museum of Art and speak with organizing curator Eva Raspini about the exhibition Cindy Sherman. Now for Art This Week. I'm here with Ava Raspini and we're going to talk about the Cindy Sherman retrospective here at the DMA. Can you sort of um, tell us what it was like to go through her huge body of work and figure out how to, how to curate the show? It was a lot of fun and I have to say that Cindy was my collaborator. We worked on the show for two years before it was presented in New York last year um, and we worked really together on making the selection of the works of art but also colors of the walls and how things were hung and each installation we were both there hanging the works you know one inch up one inch to the right um, so it really was a lot of fun and I would have to say she was my partner in crime but the actual selection of works uh, what I did was look through her entire body of work about 500 pictures or so that she's made since 1970 to the very present and I tried to make a selection of works that were the best works in my mind and the best examples of what she's done. And I also tried to represent all parts of the career. So very early in the show we have student work, for example, uh, made in 1975 and 76, and then also to the very recent and touching on each series that she made throughout her career. Now is the show chronological or is it more of a mixture of her work? It's more of a mixture of her work. You'll see rooms where there are um, photographs brought together from different time periods, a work from 1983 hanging next to work from 2008, for example. And then there are rooms that bring together discrete bodies of work, one entire series, like the untitled film stills. And we did this because she, in many ways, she works in a very serial fashion. She's making one series and works on it very intensely, finishes it, and then goes on to the next series. Some artists work on many things at once, but she doesn't work that way. Um, but also, we felt that there were these great resonances between bodies of works. There were ideas that she's been exploring throughout her career um, that we wanted to sort of draw the line between those bodies of works. So that's why you have these moments when we bring together different series so you can make that link. And I think the show does both, really underscoring the serial nature, but also then drawing the links between different bodies of work to flush out those ideas that she's been exploring throughout her career. Um, can you sort of tell a little bit about like her process? because? She doesn't use much, like in the beginning, there was no photoshopping or anything. It was no. just all single shot. Like how many shots did it take her to get that perfect shot that she was looking for? Well, Cindy's actually quite mysterious about her process. She works completely alone in the studio. She has no assistants. So not only is she her own model photographer, she's also her own makeup artist, hairdresser, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm not quite sure how the process uh, evolves because I wasn't there. However, having studied her work over the last couple of years, I know that she's actually quite, um, she gets the shot that she wants quite quickly. Uh, in the days before she was working digitally, it was a little bit more of a production. So she would get into the character, take maybe 10 to 15 shots. She would have to get out of character, go and get the film processed, and then come back and look at the contact sheets. And then perhaps she saw that something was out of focus, or something was wrong, or she wasn't happy with the results. Mm -hmm. Then she would have to get back into character and do the whole thing over again. Now that she's working digitally, she can see the results right there on the screen. So I think to a certain extent she's become more efficient. However, when you can see the results right on the screen, you can always tweak it. You know, in a way, you can just keep working forever, forever, forever when mm -hmm. you're working digitally. Yeah, it's like more of an immediate response. So she does this all in a studio. Can you sort of explain some of the techniques and processes that she uses while making these photos? Yeah, so this series, The Center Falls from 1981, is entirely shot in her studio. And in fact, after the untitled film stills, which she ended in 1980, she exclusively only works in her studio after that. Uh, so everything you see throughout the career after 1980 is made in her studio. 
With the centerfolds, she is using color to great expressive effect. So not only is she using wigs, costumes, um, and little props, not that many props, because the centerfolds are quite closely cropped to the figure, so there isn't a lot of background. But in addition to using all of those things, she's also using colored gels and colored lights. So for example, in this case, it looks like she's maybe sitting by a fire. It has this beautiful warm glow on her skin. It kind of adds to the melancholy of the piece. Um, this is achieved through colored gels, very simple. And in fact, all of her props and her tools, especially at this time in her career, are very straightforward and simple. She's shopping in vintage stores for her, you know, her costumes and outfits. She uses the same wigs over and over again. It really is a kind of, you know, very do-it-yourself. Uh, and if you look closely, you can sort of see that, actually. It's not meant to be perfect and seamless. Yeah. And then she goes from, you know, the really like her beginning works of the film stills and then moving into the, um, the centerfolds. She has a really like series timeline way of that she works with the portraits. Um, is there a reason that she sort of does that, or is it just how she works in a timeline format? It just it's how she works. As I said earlier, she really works in this kind of intense bursts of activity where she's completely immersed in one body of work. She'll finish it, and then sometimes it'll be months or even years before the next body of work. Not that she isn't planning on thinking. It'll be months or years before she makes the pictures. And usually that period of time where she makes the pictures is quite short, actually. You know, for example, the centerfolds, I think, were made within a couple of months, all 12 of them. And um, but I think the process of going from one series to another uh, is very much a reaction to what how the series was received. For example, in uh, the mid-1980s, she removes herself from the pictures. She's no longer her own model. And it was partly a reaction to how popular her work had gotten because she was her own model and people were kind of really, she was very sought after on the art market. And so as a challenge to herself, she said, well, can I make a successful picture without using myself as a model and will people buy them? And so she started to make these very disgusting uh, mise-en-scene, the disastrous pictures, the sex pictures where she uses dolls and prosthetics as a stand-in for her own body. So you can really see a trajectory in her, in her series in that you know each one in a way is a reaction to what comes before or a continuation on some of the themes that have come before. We want to thank Ava for speaking with us. More information on the exhibition can be found at DallasMuseumOfArt.com. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar